The 12C new feature I want to introduce today is the concept of the identity column. Identity columns have been around in some third party products for some time. I believe SQL Server has had them for many releases. But with Oracle, they're new with 12C. Instantly, the release I'm using is 12C 12.1 beta. Now, without an identity column, to generate primary key values, you had to do the work. And the sort of work you would have done, I'm sure you'll have written code yourselves on these lines, code such as this, create a table, depth, ID number, D name varchar2, and ID is of course meant to be the primary key value. How do you populate it? You create a sequence. I'm creating the sequence, as you'll have noticed, completely on defaults, and then you would have to use PLSQL to create a trigger. So I've created a table, created a sequence, then creating a before insert trigger, on that table, what does the trigger do? For every row I insert, I'll retrieve the next value from my sequence and use it to populate the ID column of my new row. Then, when I insert rows into the table, note I have to be very careful here, I must not insert directly into the ID column because whatever I do insert will be overwritten. But insert only into the DNAME column and maybe a second department, I'll have a sales department as well. And what do we have in that table? I'll select star from depth. There are my two rows with unique identifiers. But I had to do the work. Now we move on to the, the 12C alternative. I'll create a table and look at this syntax. Create table T1, ID, number. Generate it as identity. That's the new syntax. There are oh, quite a few more options you can put on this. I'm relying on the most simple syntax, which has defaults for everything. Then C1, varchar2. Create the table. Now what happens when I insert into it? Without any messing about with triggers, I insert a row. Note I'm inserting into column C1. If I attempted to insert into column ID with this default syntax, I would in fact get an error. Then insert a second row. And what do I have? Select star from T1. I've got my unique values. I'll just commit those rows. So, what's actually going on? Well, let's start reverse engineering this. First, a little experiment. I'll insert a third row. But this time, perhaps something goes wrong. And instead of committing, we roll back. Now, insert the row again. What do we see in the table? Well, we see my three rows, but look at that. The ID column has jumped from two to four. And that should give us a bit of a hint as to what's going on. I'm sure you can work it out already. That's exactly the same effect as with the sequence. When you select from a sequence, you can never roll back the selection. Well, reverse engineer it a step further. What do we actually have in my schema? So select object type, object name from user objects. There's my table depth. There's my depth one sequence. There's my depth ID trigger. And here are two more objects. There's the table T1 and there's this thing, implicitly created. So yes, under the covers, Oracle is using a sequence. And it would be a reasonable bet to say that there is an internal trigger to be pre-completely compiled C code that is actually doing the population of the column. What can you do with that sequence? Well. In many ways, it is indeed a sequence like any other. I can certainly select an XVAL from it. Five, six. And what will happen when I insert another row into the table? If I insert my fourth row, we'll find that its ID will be seven. So it's a sequence like any other, but it's significantly optimized. It is also protected in some ways if I try to drop it. No way. Oracle is not letting me do that. Um, just for completeness, you can, if you wish, add a full sequence creation clause. I'll create another table, T2, ID number, generated as identity
And you can add quite a lot here. We could have start with 100 increments by 100 cash 10,000 no order and that will be for the normal optimization that you want with any sequence in a clustered environment for instance so all those normal keywords are available now there is one other nice advantage here that comes in with 12c coming back to this insert into departments here I have to know the description of the table if I describe depth we can see that thing and there's nothing to stop me attempting to insert into it and with my default syntax if I describe T1 we can see that there if I try to insert into the table into the the identity column give it 99 we do in fact get an error that is controllable however by the syntax we can have the column populated only if it's left null otherwise let the end user put it in but I still at this point I have to know what that thing is and miss it out so whenever I do my inserts I have to nominate the column list it gets better there's another new feature alter table t1 modify and I'll modify column ID and I shall make it invisible another nice bit of syntax that didn't exist previously describe T1 aha and now insert into T1 values and I can put in now my fifth department and that's very nice indeed select star from T1 I have a primary key in there but it's concealed nobody knows it's actually there if I want to check what the values are I can easily make it visible again and we can see that it did indeed get its next value but this means we can in effect retrofit this mechanism to existing tables so that can be used as a primary key as a foreign key in some circumstances or without your programmers having to do any work at all. Very nice capability.